I know I'm late to the party, and I just started a YouTube channel just a few weeks ago, but Breaking Bad has to be the greatest show ever made. From the writing, cinematography, acting, locations, wardrobe, humor, drama, I, I can't even begin to get into everything. And I'm sure there's a lot of people more capable than I am that could fill you in. But there is one episode that no one has really touched on, or at least the kind of insight that I'm looking for, and I'm hoping I shall provide. So let's begin taking a look at the deeper meaning behind the most critically mixed episode of the series, Season 3, Episode 10, Fly. First off, let me say, interpretations can get out of hand sometimes. I'm sure we've all had those teachers that said the blue door symbolizes sadness or whatever she used to say. But whenever it comes to Vince Gilligan, I don't feel out of pocket. I mean, the man formed a sentence with his episode title spelling 737 down over ABQ. It's safe to say the man's insane and obsesses over the littlest details. This episode is a very special one at that, its purpose being a bottle episode which means basically the showrunners have gone over budget and need to save money by having the fewest actors on one location. Think Terry Perkins from Atlanta, the Chinese restaurant from Seinfeld, or Pine Barrens from The Sopranos. So Fly was written as one of these air quote filler episodes. But the writers Sam Caitlin and Maura Welly Beckett did an excellent job exploring more of their personal feelings and the regret Jesse and Walt seemed to push down due to their lives constantly changing and going off the rails. How can you sit and reflect when you're constantly having whiplash from the fast pacing of the show? Seriously, with an episode consisting of these two main characters, they chase a fly throughout their lab. With Watts increasing erratic behavior due to being sleep deprived, starts revealing more of his deeper feelings, reacting like more of a true serum. Jesse, being in a more vulnerable place and open to share these feelings as he suffered loss and was expressing more of himself from being fresh out of rehab, attempting to better himself I suppose, I mean in his own way, he was selling and stealing meth on the side. Flies can sometimes represent malice, blame, or hate. This is due in part to the ways that flies make us feel. They hover around us buzzing obnoxiously until, no longer able to ignore the annoyance, we slap or kill the offending insect. So flies may represent negative feelings or loss of self-control. This can be expressed specifically to Walt's place and time. He lacks control over the situation he finds himself in, being stuck working for Gustavo Fring as his brother-in-law suffers critical injuries due to the choices that Walt himself has made, collapsing all around him like a domino effect. I'm sure we've all been in a similar state of our lives, but in much lesser stakes. I mean, what are the chances that we're both drug dealers, right? But being in a place of having no control can surely drive you down the spiral path of obsessing over the littlest things you can control. Take me for example, I like to clean my house and cook if I have another one of these videos I need to write when I have no idea what I want to talk about. There are multiple interpretations for having a fly as a center of attention. Different religions and cultures have other meanings for them. So I was thinking maybe, the setting being New Mexico, there would be something in Native American folklore that would bring this to light. Often they symbolize death, curses, and black magic, but to some Native Americans, they are seen as message bearers. Some also believe that flies were responsible for teaching man the secrets of fire, which doesn't sound right to me. But I believe taking everything they talk about into account, we begin to have a clearer picture. Walter begins to brainstorm when would have been the perfect time for him to drop dead, to which he comes up with the conclusion that it was the night Jane died from her overdose. He is saddened by the fact he misses his perfect chance for his family to miss him and have good memories of him. Now hold on to that thought, because this whole episode opens with Skylar singing a lullaby to Holly on that night Walter spoke of. First and last time we see Walter in this episode is when he's attempting to sleep and throughout the entire episode he's liking sleep up until he's in a half asleep state to the point he's delirious. This tells me the most likely interpretation we could use for this fly is when it comes to dreams. Flies don't always literally mean death. Sometimes the meaning can be metaphorical, telling you that something is going to end in your life and that something else is going to replace it is a phase of your life coming to an end and a new one about to start. This fly was a way for telling the viewer Walter White hit the point of no return, and from this moment on, Heisenberg was in the driver's seat. At this point, this realization of mine got me excited and reminded me of a writing practice they use for three-act structures. In the middle of a story, during Act 2, there is a moment called the point of no return. 
which made me curious enough to search where the episode Fly lands in the overall order of Breaking Bad. To my surprise, it falls directly in the middle as episode 30 in the 62 episode series. This episode is literally the point of no return for Walter White. The moment he can't go back to the way things used to be. The point where the stakes become their highest as the episode's half measures and full measure pick up the danger. The fly only dies after Walter apologizes to Jesse for Jane's death and finally admits loss of control over his life when he tells Jesse to let it go, it being the fly, and saying it's all contaminated. Walter, without realizing, lets go of his need for control and to focus on what he could do now. This fly that intrudes on Walter and Jesse's life is a manifestation of imminent change. The universe is random. It's not inevitable. It's simple chaos, subatomic particles in endless, endless collision. That's what science teaches us. But what is this saying? Breaking Bad is a beautifully written show, which I believe has an equally beautiful message it tries to teach its viewers. The message they give you from the very beginning in season one, episode three, when Walter talks about the chemical makeup of the human body, a small percentage cannot be accounted for. So Gretchen offers an answer, a simple one at that, the soul. Walter dismisses the idea as he dismisses the fate of meeting Jane's father, an important moment as the universe offers Walter a chance to face his choices. It's been done time and time again, but the writers of the show really are gods in the grand scheme of things, predetermining the outcome of Walter White's fate and aligning the pieces as they see fit. A sense of cosmic justice seems to be the appropriate description for someone with an emotionally toiled soul like Heisenberg. As we begin to understand the irony of us being the observers, maybe, and I mean just maybe, we could observe our own life, align the pieces, and interpret the messages the universe could be sending us at this very moment. Wouldn't you want to know when your point of no return is? Wouldn't you like to make the changes you can at this moment to manifest the best possible ending for yourself and your story? Well, here's to trying, and here's to dying. Thank you, everybody. First off, let me say, or to, <laughs> think Terry Perkins from the, the Jesus. There are multiple interprets. 37 down over ABQ. It's safe to say that the just. <sighs> I'm just, I'm just so sorry, everybody.